dear students today i want to discuss about very important topics acute plastic paralysis that is afp which is very important for your examinations as well as your viva board now what do you mean by acute plastic paralysis acute means repeat evolution from weakness to paralysis within 5 days that is patients gradually gradually patient develops weakness to paralysis within 5 days placid means floppy not stiff or spastic paralysis means unable to move the affected limb which is not from birth or from injury now definition what do you mean by acute placid paralysis children under 15 years of age presented with rapid evolution from weakness to paralysis within 5 days which is floppy in nature not stiff or spastic and unable to move the affected limbs which is not from birth or from injury so age of the children must be less than 15 years and must present from weakness and gradually develops paralysis within 5 days this paralysis is floppy that is placid type not stiff or spastic type and for paralysis patient not able to move his affected limbs and these paralysis or weakness of limbs not from birth or from any injury this acute placid type paralysis is due to lower motor type of lower motor type of lesions now what are the dd differential diagnosis very important usually uh, given in the uh, written examinations or sometimes asked in viva board the most important is gbs means gulin barren syndrome second is tenbus malaitis third is stomatic neuritis fourth is spinal cord compression fifth is paralytic polio myelitis and sixth is periodic paralysis that is due to hypokalemia and seventh is diphtheric polyneuritis i put in five number paralytic polio myelitis because our bang, our our country is polio free so it is it is it kept in the five number mind it uh, before polio free we we put in the first number now it is fifth number now how can you inv- investigate acute placid paralysis fill up a investigation form and collection of two stool samples 24 hour apart within 14 days of onset of paralysis and send it for culture polio virus is more in number within 14 days of paralysis so stool is cal- stool is collected within 14 days so first when you find a when you get a acute placid paralysis first of all you collect the two samples two stool samples 24 apart within 14 days of onset to exclude the polio virus and second investigation is lumbar puncture with csf study to exclude the other causes such as gulen barre syndrome if you do the lv and uh, collect the csf for study of uh, protein after two weeks of paralysis you get the raise protein in gulen barre syndrome and there is cell count is reduced so it is called the albumino cytological dissociation nerve conduction velocity abnormal in polio and gulbarri syndrome if you do the slide electrolytes hypokalemia in periodic paralysis and if you do the ct mri of the spinal cord you may get the tenbus myelitis this p deform in deformity of the spinal cord and you may got the spinal cord compression it may due to tumor trauma or tuberculosis and if you do the complete blood count you may get the lymphocytic leukocytosis if viral infection and neutrophilic leukocytosis in case of bacterial infection the differentiation between the poliomyelitis gulenberg syndrome tenbus myelitis and traumatic neuritis site of lesion anterior horn cells of the spinal cord and motor cranial nerves of medulla oblongata in case of poliomyelitis 
and site of lesion increase of Gulbera syndrome is peripheral nerves. In transverse myelitis, there is inflammation of the spinal cord across the wide of one level or segment of the spinal cord. Uh, injury of the sciatic nerve in case of traumatic neuritis. History Fever, headache, back pain, paralysis after oral polio vaccination. It is more common history in case of poliomyelitis. In Gurdjieff syndrome, there is 1 to 4 weeks preceding history of GI tract or respiratory tract infection. In case of transverse myelitis, there is preceding viral infection. In case of traumatic neuritis, there is history of trauma or IM injection in gluteal region. Fever at onset, high fever always present at the onset of paralysis in case of poliomyelitis, but in case of Gurdjieff syndrome, fever is uncommon. And transverse myelitis is rarely present, and traumatic neuritis may be present. Progression to full paralysis takes 24 to 48 hours in case of poliomyelitis, and hours or days in case of GBS, and hours to four days in case of transverse myelitis, and hours to four days in case of traumatic neuritis. Motor functions: asymmetrical placid paralysis of the lower limb. Very important asymmetrical para placid paralysis. It is asymmetrical blood placid, usually involve the lower limb. And proximal muscles are more affected than distal muscles. So, involve is the proximal muscles more common than the distal muscles. This occurs in the polyomyelitis. But in case of GBS, there is bilateral ascending type of placid paralysis, placid paralysis. There is symmetrical bilaterally. So it is placid type or lower limb distal muscles are more affected than proximal muscles. In transverse myelitis, initially bilateral passive paralysis of the lower limb due to spinal shock and after that subsequently patient develop bilateral spastic paraplegia that is upper motor type of lesion. After disappearance of spinal shock in case of transverse myelitis. In traumatic neuritis, there is asymmetrical placid paralysis and affected one leg. And if you do the uh, tendon reflexes, in case of polyomyelitis, it may decrease or absent. Same, same thing occurs in the GBS and in transverse myelitis, initially lower motor type of lesion that is decreases absence of the deep tendon reflexes, but later on exaggerated due to upper motor type of lesion. And in case of traumatic neuritis, deep tendon reflexes may be decreased or absent, but knee jerk present and ankle jerk absent. Plantar response lost, GBS lost, and in case of transverse myelitis, initially lost they are an extensor and traumatic neuritis it may be extensor. Sensory functions in case of polymyelitis is intact, but in case of GBS usually intact, but may occur in acute motor sensory axonal neuropathy. In transverse myelitis, wide space sensory loss with definite sensory upper level, very important wide space sensory loss definite sensory upper level, loss of pain, temperature, light touch with preservation of the position and vibration sense. Uh, in case of traumatic neuritis, usually sensory system intact. In cranial involvement, in case of poliomyelitis, it is involved the valvar or valvospinal polio, most commonly 9 and 10. In GBS, most commonly 7, 9, 10, 11 and 12 cranial nerve involved, but in transverse myelitis, usually absent. absent. In traumatic neuritis absent. In respiratory insufficiency present in both valvar and valvospinal polio. Uh, in GBS it is present but life threatening. In transverse myelitis is usually absent. Traumatic neuritis is absent. Then autonomic involvement usually absent in poliomyelitis may present in GBS usually absent in usually may be present in transverse myelitis. This fluctuation of BP and 
excessive sweating, body temperature, uh, urinary retention. This autonomic involvement is common in base in case of tenbus paralysis, absent in the absent in the traumatic neuritis. In bladder and bladder dysfunction, it is absent in the poliomyelitis, absent in the GBS, and usually present in the tenbus paralysis, absent in the traumatic neuritis. And if you do the investigation, CSO study. Uh, it, you may get the lymphocytic pleocytosis that is lymphocyte count more than the albumin uh, and uh, that is normal protein. But if you do the after 2 weeks, uh, if you do the LP and study for cytology and protein, you get the albuminocytosis dissociation that is high albumin and normal or slightly increased lymphocytes. In case of Tenbus malitis, moderate lymphocytic pleocytosis, normal or mild elevated protein. In case of tomatic neuritis, normal. If you do the NAR conduction velocity at third weeks, it is normal in the poliomyelitis, abnormal demyelination in case of GBS, normal or abnormal in case of tenbus malitis, and tomatic neuritis, it is abnormal. So, these are the most important characteristic features of poliomyelitis. GBS and tenbus malitis and traumatic neuritis. Mind it, polymeric anterior horse lesions and GBS peripheral nerves and TM is inflammation of spinal cord and traumatic neuritis injury of the sciatic nerve. In polymyelitis, that is that is asymmetric placid paralysis of the lower limb, proximal muscles are involved, but in case of GBS, bilateral ascending type of placid type of paralysis of the lower limb and distal muscles are involved. And in case of tenbus, tenbus malitis, Initially, bilateral facial paralysis of lower limb, subsequently patient develop bilateral spastic paraplasia, very important features. And among the sensory function, there is intact in case of poliomyelitis and GBS usually intact, but may sometimes may be impaired, but tenbus myelitis, it has widespread sensory loss with definitely sensory upper level. In case of traumatic neuritis, easily, easily, easily sensory intact. In muscle wasting, it is more common in poliomyelitis. In another three conditions, GBS and, and TM and traumatic neuritis absent. And the students, the, we will ask you in Viva board, what do you mean by AFP, acute passive paralysis? How can you investigate AFP and what are the differential diagnosis of AFP? Thank you.